So you've created your pattern in mid journey and now you're wondering what to do next. In this video, I'm gonna take you step by step on my process, how I create the pattern in mid journey, check the pattern and how I edit the pattern and get it ready so that way I can sell it on Etsy and other various platforms. So without further ado, let's just jump right on into my computer so you can see how this goes. Okay, now we're in our mid journey and right now I'm getting prepared. I'm about to set up for what I'm about to do. So what I'm gonna do is create a folder, a new folder on my desktop. So there go the new folder, it's untitled. So I know what I'm gonna make. So I want to make some vintage Christmas digital paper. Okay, so now I have my folder ready and these are where my mid journey files will go. So now I'm gonna open this up. I'm gonna do my imagine prompt and we're gonna check it out. There we have it. I'll take a quick look to see if I wanna continue using this prompt. Okay, not bad, not bad. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the prompt again. I do not like to waste my credits, okay? So I like to make sure it's something I like before I repeat it, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and repeat it twice. Yes, I'm sure I wanna repeat it. So I'm gonna make a couple of more of these. So now it's done. So I am gonna grab the ones I like so we check this one already. I always check them first, okay? I go in and I check them to make sure there's nothing funky going on in the image, right? Um, I've seen horror stories about that and I don't want that for my customers, right? So one, two, I like them all, but two, three, four, I like all of those. Let's go check this one out while those are upscaling. Okay. Those look good. One, two, three, four. Those look similar, right? So I kind of don't want to do those, but I like this number four. Okay. So I do like that number four. And these kind of look similar to that. I do like number three too, cause I like that color. Okay, so those are upscaling. So what I do next is I will go get the ones that are upscaled. Click, open it in browser. And then we're gonna save. And I save these as I want them to be named. Vintage Christmas one. And I want it to be saved on the desktop inside of my vintage paper. Save. And then all I do is delete the last number and put the next number in the sequence. So then that way they're already numbered. And then we're just going to close out all of the rest of them and get back into the mid journey. And now we have all of our files downloaded into our folder on, on our desktop, okay? So now what I wanna do is grab that file that folder, here go the folder right here. And we're gonna go over to the seamless pattern checker. So I kind of want you guys to see the folder. Here go the folder right here. What are designs in them? Directly out of mid journey, okay? So now we're going to go in here and grab all of the designs like such. And then we're just gonna drop them onto there. Now, this is how we check to make sure the pattern is seamless. So we want to double check to make sure the pattern is seamless. 
and it has all of our patterns that we just created all in one. And this pattern checker is free to use. Okay, so they look good. Looks very good. Okay. People can use these as backgrounds to tumblers they're getting ready to, to make. And this is not a tumbler actual wrapper fit for a tumbler. These can these backgrounds can be used for people who make the wraps for the tumblers. So that way they can use this as their background and then they can size it to the size the tumbler needs to be and then they can highlight those uh, tumbler wraps. It can be used as a shower curtain. It can be used for uh, a, a picture, a gift wrapping paper, um, wallpaper. <laughs> it's so many things you can use digital paper for. It makes no sense. So whoever the creative is that gets these types of digital papers, it, they can take a scrapbook with it. They can um, make journal paper out of it. All they got to do is put this paper into their software and kind of like lighten the opacity and then put the lines on there or whatever. And it can be like a whole background for a piece of journal paper, part of their journaling or their junk journal or scrapbooking. It can be used for a tons of things. Digital paper is very versatile and it depends. It's only limited by the person's thought process or creativity when it comes down to digital papers. That's why I love making them. So they're all seamless, right? So we're good to go with that. So that's done. Let's head back over here. Now it's time for us to jump into Photoshop. So we're going to get Photoshop ready. I'm on my stream deck now. We're going to get Photoshop ready. Okay, so now Photoshop is up. And with Photoshop, all we want to do is we want to go open a new file. And if you haven't made one already, which is a template, I've talked about template templates in past videos. If you want to have a template ready, all you have to do is set it up with your width and height. I do 3600 by 3600, which is a 12 by 12 inch. That's pretty large. And I do the resolution at a 300 DPI or PPI is also called. I keep my transparent background and then you can click this little button and it will give you a save prompt and you can name your template and then it'll show up on the side like mine's do. Okay, so I have mine selected already. I'm gonna create the template. Now in this template, I wanna check it. Image, image size, and it needs to be in this format. It needs to be a 12 by 12 inch the resample does need to stay on in this. It needs to stay preserve, detail, enlargement. And in this, we're not going to export. We're going to save a copy as, okay? So I just want to let you know if you've seen other videos, you've seen me turn this off for other reasons. But in this video for digital paper, we're leaving it on, okay? So this is good. We're good with that. Now what we're going to do is go back over here to our folders, to our papers, and we're going to drag and we're gonna drop them onto the board. And then we're gonna press enter to load them all up. We're gonna keep pressing enter until all 10 of them are loaded. So now we have 10 papers in Photoshop. We're gonna go over to our layers palette and we're gonna turn everything off and then we're gonna start from number one. So now we're down at the first one. So what we're gonna do is we're going to click on number one and then we're going to go to file and then we're going to go to save as now we're going to save on the computer and we're going to save on the desktop inside of our folder okay so that's what we're going to do we're going to save inside of our folder let me open this up and now we're in our folder now we don't want to mix the ones we saved with the ones that are here okay so we need to make a new folder and we're going to say uh, vintage Christmas. These are the final ones. We're going to create this folder and now we're going to save this as and we're going to change this to a JPEG. So we want a JPEG file and then we're going to save this as vintage 
Christmas one. I want to save and I want to copy actually. Okay, so I copied the name so that way I can easily copy and paste the other ones. Or I can click and change. I do it both ways. So then we're going to save it in this folder. And so we copied and saved. Now it's going to bring up our options. I leave everything the same. Okay, so now that's saved. So now we're moving on to number two. And then I will go do this here. Save a copy as. I'm going to go onto the computer. I have it set up to ask me every time. Okay. Because sometimes I make a mistake and click a button. So I don't want it to do something drastic, right? So then I'll go in here and change this to number two. Say okay. Open up the next one and save that as and so forth, so on and so forth, right? So this is what you would need to do. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish taking care of this. And once I'm done, we'll be back and you can see what I'm gonna do next and why I did it like this. I've just finished doing every, all 10 patterns and I made a copy and I saved. So here's the reason why you wanna save a copy as instead of using export or using save as so if we were to use the export on this and export as a jpeg it would not render at a 300 ppi when a customer drops it into their photoshop it'll come back it'll come back large but it'll come back at like a 50 inch by 50 inch at 72 dpi so it's not going to give them the exact settings that we created it for, right? I mean, they can easily turn it into a 12 by 12, 300 DPI and everything will work out fine. But that is one of the reasons why it doesn't populate like that is because it's the way the person saved the file. So with export, that's how it's going to come back. So we don't want to export it. Now, if we go to save as you will notice we can't even save it as a JPEG. It doesn't give us the option in the new 2023 Photoshop, the CC. Okay. It doesn't give us the option to do that. Okay. So it's only when you save a copy, do you get the, or all these options to save as a JPEG. Okay. So that's why we want to do it. Even when you press save as it will give you the option to save it as a copy so you can get the file you need. But instead of doing that extra step, we went ahead and saved each and every one of them. We saved a copy into our final vintage Christmas folder. So now that that is done, what I'm going to do is I'm going to save this whole file. So I'm going to save this into the cloud. So I have all of these files again, so it's saving. And then what I do to double check is I turn it all the way off. I open up our, our file. I open back up the file and now it's time to check. So I'm gonna pick one of these, I'll pick two and I'll drop it in here. And now two is in here. So now I wanna go to the image, image size, but you see how it's saved at the 14 to two at 72 DPI. So it saved it at a smaller one. Oh, did I not cancel? Grab the right one. <laughs> nope, I didn't grab the right one. See, that's why we got it in another file. Cause so we wanted to open up our vintage Christmas final. We don't want it. We don't want to open up the mid journey ones. So don't do that. Okay. Be careful. I knew something didn't look right. I'm like, that looks small. <laughs> okay, so image size. There we go. We have it. We have it at 12 by 12, 300 DPI. So we know those files are good to sell. All right, so now they're good to sell. Now, how do we work this baby? Okay, so now I'm in making sure I'm in the right one. Okay, so I'm in the right file here. So now what I want to do is I want to grab them all 
and I want to compress them. When you compress them, you just make a copy of them into this folder so the originals stay outside, okay? So if you delete this uh, zip folder, you don't have to worry about losing your originals. So we're gonna name this, this folder Vintage Christmas 1. Now, once I name it, I wanna check it. And if you're working with a Windows, you're gonna wanna check properties. I like to check it because I know I've uploaded to Etsy enough that each individual file needs to stay under 20 megabytes. So that's 20 MB. Etsy will only allow you to upload five files each at 20 or below. Okay, so we need to make sure this is below <laughs> 20. So this is how we do that. We go to properties or get info if you're on a Mac and you open it up and you check the the what's on the disk so this one is at 18.8 .8 mb megabytes it is good okay so which means i can upload all 10 of these at once so this is the file i will upload to etsy to sell because you can sell them individually but you don't want to do that you want to have it in a zip folder because again etsy will only allow you to upload five files five individual files like this but we can't because we have more than five so we need to zip them together and put all of what we can into one so that leaves me with four more files i can upload all in you know a bundle like all in a zip folder so there you have it in the back i fill out my description on my listing and when it says upload the file, I upload this zip file. I drag and drop it up in there. And then when a customer makes a purchase on Etsy, what's going to happen is when they get to thank you, your item, you can download this here. It's going They're going to download this zip file. Now, when the zip file gets to on their computer, all they do is most computers have an open where you can just open, open it like that right click it and press open and then it brings out the folder out of here now they still have another copy of this so they can save this somewhere else in case they ever need to go back and get another one out so it brought it out and then they have the same file we have that's why we named the files the way we named them so we we have it already set up so let me delete that because we don't want to get them confused with the or with the um mid journey ones and if you want to better organize your your folders than this you could also make a mid journey folder and you pop all your mid journey ones in there okay of course this is just an example i have a more laid out folder with a whole bunch of designs in them on an the external drive because of so many but this gives you an idea of how I go about preparing my seamless patterns that were created out of mid journey and how I get them ready to sell on Etsy or any other platform I'm allowed to sell my digital uh, downloads on. Okay, well, there you have it. We finished our project. If this is something that you like, feel free to like and subscribe to my channel. As well, my website, dwillis.com, is up finally, finally, finally. It's not all the way finished yet. I am creating a resource for everyone, but you can go check it out again. That website is dwillis.com. And I talk about more than just Etsy and creating digital products. I also speak on terms of ways we can create additional income by creating automatic income machines uh, for us to keep generating generating income in various ways using our digital products. Okay. So until the next video, bye.